Okay, welcome back. Time to discuss crossroad adjustment. And first off, for those of you that are familiar with the term, a crossroad is simply a metal rod that can be adjusted to straighten or decrease their tension with a bolt. And this then lies inside any guitar neck or bass neck for that matter and helps straighten or bowing the neck slightly. If you pull it tightly, it will drag the net and that is to balance then the tension of the strings because when you have no truss rod like on a you know classical Spanish guitar over time what happens often in a dry climate the neck will start to warp the strings will pull and in the end you're sitting there with a banana neck that is completely unplayable so that's the function of the truss rod uh, you also use a crossroad to adjust the neck in summer and winter in different type of humidities which will then affect the guitar. A flatwood guitar however will not be affected by humidity and climate changes or seasonal changes thanks to the mat flatwood material. So once you've set the crossroad for your individual playing style preference you will never have to touch it ever again unless you change to dramatically higher tension strings or detune a lot, anything that affects the, the current tension of the string against the tension of the neck. So uh, crossroad relief is, as I said, something you know based on your optimum performance or your preference when playing your musical style. Because it's like buying a new car. When you buy a new car, it comes set up from factory to fit almost anyone. But sometimes you do need to adjust seating and reel and stuff like that. And it's the same thing with the neck. A higher relief, and relief then means how bow, bowed the neck is. A high relief means that the neck has almost a U shape, like so, in relation to the straight string. And a back bow on the neck, as a very low relief or flat relief, means that the neck is straighter, almost bent on the other way. So if you have uh, if you play a lot of slide or heavier strings with a lot of bending, you might want to have a slightly bigger relief, slightly bigger bow on the neck. And if you want to do a lot of maybe effortless left hand playing and thinner strings, you might want to have a flat relief. If you don't do a because if you don't do a lot of you know slide playing and such, uh, one thing to consider is that if you have a really high truss rod and a really high string height you will be more prone to unintonated notes up here because when you push the string down it will be forced to be pulled more sharply out of pitch as opposed to a lower string height with a flat relief. On the other hand, too flat relief will make the string buzz out more and making you have you know, killing sustain and killing the note more rapidly. So, with that said, uh, Relief also is affected by the curvature, the radius of neck, how curved or flat the actual fretboard is. A flatwood guitar has a 12 inch radius, which is then like a Les Paul type guitar. Whereas if you have a winter strat type guitar with a 7.25 inch radius or a curve like so, you need to have a higher relief, a bigger bow on the neck, because otherwise the strings will fret out when you bend. A 12 inch radius is really optimum for suiting a wide, wide variety of musical styles. A really flat neck might be suitable mainly just for fast, effortless legato left hand playing, but will be not so suitable for good cording. So, let's check out then how to access our truss rod to check the current truss rod setting of the guitar. Uh, as you can see, the Crossroad cover up here, the plastic part up there, where you see my name, does not have any screws attached to it like you most of the time see on the guitar, but the screw is on the back side of the neck instead. So you take the wrench I showed you earlier, put it in there, and just unscrew it, like so, put it to the side, turn the guitar around, now you see the crossroad cover is just lying there between the strings. Then I just loosen the D string and the G-string, not much, just enough so that you can pull them out into their adjacent slots to create a clearance in between here, then we can very easily lift the fretboard cover, crossword cover out. Now, before doing any adjustment here, I first need to check my current relief. 
and then I need to tune the strings back up. Because it's really important that you have the appropriate string tension or that will affect the, you know, the relief. Another important thing is to always check relief or when you check intonation to have guitar upright in a playing position. Because everything like you have the guitar that way or that way or that way will affect how the weight of the material on the neck pulls on the strings and the tremolo, thereby slightly, slightly altering these, you know, set up measurements. And it's really important that you use the playing position. Right now we'll try to show you more in a lying position, but let's just imagine that I'm in a playing position. I put a capo up here. You don't need to, but I'll need to just to be able to have an extra hand to show you here. Then you can use the steel ruler or the filo gorgeous if you have them. You put your other hand's finger up here on the 22nd fret, the highest fret on the flexible guitar, which is D. And again, capo on the first fret. Pull that high, high D down so that the string is pulled down in two places. Then take the ruler, set it against around the 8th fret and check the clearance between the fret board uh, sorry, the fret wire, the top of the crown fret, and the string. And you should see a clearance there. On my guitar the clearance is around 0 0.6 millimeters. And that is a bit high because recommended clearance for a 12 inch radius flat foot neck is around 0 0.010 inch radius or 0 0.25 millimeters and upwards. Come from uh, you know, from the factory set up to around 0.3 millimeters with 10 inch strings. I prefer to use thicker strings, which means I need a slightly higher relief to have optimum clearance for the strings. And I also like a little bit higher relief to get a good grip on the string for my playing style. But let's say now that I want to make this relief lower. I want to have less of a bow on the neck, a straighter neck for more F plus playing. Then I need to tighten the cross rod. Tightening the cross rod inside the neck will pull it, will pull in the neck, so the neck will become flatter. And if I loosen the cross rod, the strings will pull more, and thereby the neck will have more of a bow. It will have a higher relief. So then I detune the D and the D strings again, lift them out. Then I take my small socket wrench, put it like so over the bolt. And if I now want to tighten the crossword, as I said, I just bring this one clockwise, like so, okay? And if I want to loosen it, well, then it's counterclockwise, like so, okay? So nothing to it. It's just like tightening in any bolt of any kind. Clockwise, tighten, counterclockwise, loosen. And then just tighten like an eighth of a turn or something. You don't need to do a lot really small steps here. And once I'm back in pitch, I put my couple back on. And I check my clearance again. And now it's around 0 0.3, maybe 0 0.4 millimeters. And that's enough for me. So, then I play with this for a while, see if I like it, if I don't like it, I just adjust it until I have a playing thing preference that suits me perfectly. And once I've set that, then I never have to touch the neck again, because as I said, the flexwood necks will never warp due to seasonal changes, climate changes. So the, for the cross rod is just there, neck stability and helping you to set your optimum playing preferences. So that is it for cross rod adjustment. The guitar comes, in my opinion, very perfectly set up. But should you want to change to higher string gorgeous and stuff like that, just check this part of the tutorial out and go for it.